Um, someone I had on two episodes ago was a philosopher called Greg Caruso. Mm -hmm. um, he, I share his view. We, um, he believes that there's no such thing as free will, that um, we shouldn't be blaming anyone for anything and we shouldn't be praising anyone for anything. Um, basically, we have no control over our actions because we have no control over so many different things prior to us um, carrying mm -hmm. out action. Um, and so his, his idea for reforming the penal system is that's what he calls the quarantine model where he attributes that to if, if we went to a different country and contracted Ebola, the government would quarantine you away for the safety of everyone else in society. Mm -hmm. And he believes that's what we should do with anyone that commits a dangerous offence. We should be quarantining them away from society, but not mm -hmm. actually punishing them. What do, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, that's uh, <laughs> quite, quite a big area, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the no... Um, free will argument really i do think we all make choices on a daily basis i think some choices are harder for some people to make because of their upbringing etc and what they've been exposed to you know a bit like we, we talked about sally challen you know i'm sure she didn't want to choose to do that um but the circumstances of her life had had, had led her to to that place but i think you know generally speaking we can choose to walk away or not um but i do think it's much more difficult for some people um to exercise that free will um so, so I've, I've um forgotten the last part of the uh oh you were talking about quarantining weren't you um yeah i mean i don't think it's helpful to punish and make prison into some kind of really unpleasant experience for the prisoner, because I think that that potentially leads to a more dangerous person being released into society. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think we should be, um, you know, torturing people in prison for sure. I think the quarantine, I would call it protection rather than quarantine, that they are removed from society, I suppose, to, mean that they can't continue to to repeat those um th those criminal acts but it almost leads to the point where you could say that if you're saying there's no free will actually you could take these people out before they do anything you know and you don't need to wait until they've actually committed this act that you say they were you know um that they were always going to commit because of their life, that why don't you take them out before the act? You know, you, you could go that far with it, can't you? But obviously that's not how our, how our system works. Um, but I do think that we can often see some of these patterns emerging and you can see sometimes a perpetrator, um, you know, committing acts that are only going one way in terms of seriousness and sometimes we don't deal with those smaller acts quickly enough I mean look at you know Wayne Cousins the police officer that murdered Sarah Everard you know he didn't suddenly just have this issue and you know go out and, and rape and murder Sarah Everard there were loads of red flags about his behaviour beforehand some of which were also criminal you know they're exposing himself and all of that and again I think these type of things are not taken very seriously and it's almost well you know he did that he was just having a joke it's what blokes do and all of that kind of thing um you know he was referred to at work as the rapist and that you know all of those things that were really leading to the situation that he ended up in nobody should have been surprised really so you know should we be waiting for that to happen or should we be trying to intervene earlier down the road and I think we do need to intervene earlier um you know I'm not suggesting that people should be arrested for you know their thoughts but I think that once it starts to spill out into the way they act um, then I think we just need to take those small incidents much more seriously because they can be indicators of um, much more serious behaviour further down. It's a little bit like stalking. You know, on average, a woman will have experienced over 100 incidents of stalking before she ever picks the phone up to the police. 
So, you know, the police need to take that really seriously at day one. Um, and when we look at most domestic homicides, we'll have had in the run up to that an element of stalking be before the murder happens. So, you know, if we're serious about tackling, you know, murder, rape, we need to deal with the less serious incidents much more seriously, in my view. And I think things like stalking, uh, which, which obviously involves obsession and, and fixation, things like, you know, those lower grade sexual offences, like exposing yourself. Well, we need to take that much more seriously, I think, because what kind of person does that and what, what potentially will that lead to? I think like, what you're saying about like intervening, I think that there's ways to intervene in those sorts of cases and there's also preventative measures more broadly that can be taken like what's mm. happening in, in these schools I was speaking about bringing up boys yeah. in, because um, so with surrounding that free will conversation to me th these men that um, lead up to, to carrying out these horrible atrocities they're generally I would say in their past there is indicators that they will be that's the type of man that would carry that out um, and it yeah. could even be abuse from on to them as children it could be the way yeah. their parents were it could be the way their friends were it could be um any number of things and that's why i think like there is preventative measures we can take broadly as a society it's just that these are big changes and these mm -hmm. big changes don't tend to be taken seriously yeah and I think that the small things where, you know, you could intervene on, they are not taken seriously at all. Um, and I think in years to come, we will look at um, misogyny very, very differently um, and, and treat it in, in the serious way that it should be treated. You know, if you look at things like terrorism, you know, that there's been articles written um recently discussing how when you look at the the people that have been convicted of terrorist acts um the vast majority of them have got a history of domestic abuse mm -hmm. so there are real links between um these kind of hateful behaviors effectively that somebody like that will express hate um, often in a misogynistic way as well and again you know we need to take these these smaller acts much much more seriously because they can lead to you know very very serious um incidents later down the line whether that be rape murder terrorism what whatever it is um you know uh, we, we've got to deal with the red flags and not just ignore them or, or you know laugh them off and say well boys will be boys what do you expect all of that kind of thing which allows that behavior to just snowball and um you know they don't come from nowhere mm.